All right, awesome guys. Um, so yeah, we're just about to get started. Uh, Dan here, I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of Follow Up Boss. And I've also got Eric, who's our head of support. He's gonna be driving today. Um, awesome, thanks, Kimberly. Uh, just wanna do a quick sound check, just make sure everyone can hear us okay. Just put your hand up or write in a little Q&A box. We're gonna have plenty of time for Q&A later. So if you do have questions, um, you know, our goal is to help you guys get through this, help you get set up with these new features. And we're gonna have a lot of support available after the webinar and all that kind of thing as well. But yeah, please bring, do bring your questions. We're gonna have a section at the end when we talk about uh, the follow-up boss pixel. I'm gonna have a section um, after we talk about the inbox as well. Cool, thanks everyone. Thanks, John. Thanks, Dean. Thanks, David. Thanks everyone that's uh, commenting that uh, we're all good. Uh, Eric, you there? You can, cool, can I'm here. Hear you. Can everyone hear me? I'm your uh, professional limo driver for today. Yeah, if you've ever called in to support, it's, it's very likely you've talked to Eric already. So yeah, he's a rock star and he's gonna be showing us through some of this stuff today. Um, yeah, so just, just to get started, um, you know, we want to talk a little about, a bit about like sort of the vision for follow-up boss and, you know, as many of you guys already know, like really our goal is to help you get all your leads, your sales workflow and your marketing in one place. You know, we don't build websites, we don't generate Facebook leads for you, but we want to keep you plugged into all the best companies that do that. And so that's a big part of why we're launching this Pixel uh, product. So you guys have a lot more choice of the uh, marketing vendors you want to use and a lot more tracking and integration. So yeah, we're really excited with the tech we're building this uh, this year and you know, also building the follow-up boss community. So uh, to kick us off, I just want to check in how many people actually have a website integrated with uh, follow-up boss at the moment. So there'll probably be a little quick poll show up on your screen. Um, yeah, I'd love to see some answers. Well, a lot of fast responses. We're at about, 74% yes, and about 26% no. Yeah, and some people have multiple websites integrated. That's a good point, uh, Leanne, so for sure. Oh uh, yeah, so we, we finished about a couple of people still voting. It's about 75%, 25%. So. That's awesome. Uh, what we're gonna show you guys today is how the Pixel can actually help enhance that integration, how it can help you get more data, even if your uh, website is already integrated into Follow Up Boss, and also how it can help you get more leads actually calling and texting you, um, so you can get more leads from the traffic you have uh, as well. So yeah, thanks for uh, filling that out. All right, so yeah, I think Eric's going to give us a little bit of a demo here. Basically, what you can see here is one of our customers' websites. So maybe just jump over to the desktop side, Eric, and the um, yeah, the person screen. Yep. So obviously on the left, we've got uh, Clay's follow-up boss account. And this is just a test lead we made in his account. Um, and down in the bottom right of his account, you can see all the online activity. So these are the pages people have been uh, viewing on the website or Eric's been viewing on his website. The other thing you'll notice in there is we actually explain like where these uh, activity came from. So initially uh, this, this came in from uh, Facebook retargeting. So we're actually tracking that kind of stuff back to the system now. Uh, this is actually, uh, although it says retargeting here, this is actually first touch attribution. So where the lead has first came from. Um, and so that allows you to be more accurate like with your ad campaigns and everything like that. So as Eric like goes through and browses the site, this will actually update in real time. And you can see it also lights up green there that you know he's on the website uh, right now. A couple of people asking if this will be recorded. Yep, definitely be recorded. And we'll send it out afterwards as well. Um, and you, we're also gonna have help guides and everything like that to make you, sure you guys set up. Cool. So. You know, the big uh, advantage of the pixel here is you can just easily drop it on any website. I think Clay actually has, he was one of our early testers. So thanks Clay for um, you know being an early tester of this. Um, but he has about four different websites. So it's not even a case of just trying to get one website vendor to integrate and all that kind of thing. It's actually like he's using multiple different websites and services. So that's a big advantage that we're sort of like bringing those all back um, into follow-up us.
Cool. So I think now we may jump into where to install it. Like, let's say I'm excited. I want to, I want to go and install this, Eric. Uh, like, where am I going to go in the app? Yep. So basically just jump into admin integrations as Eric was showing, like there's, there's a website uh, tracking uh, place. And then you just hit on that and then you'll copy this code over. Yeah, Eric, if you want to unmute yourself, I'll let you do some of the talking as well. Awesome. Yeah. So basically what I'm doing here is when you're in your account under admin and you click on uh, more, some of you, depending on your monitor size, may just see integrations. You click on integrations and you'll see this website tracking beta. Uh, the first time, oh, someone said we can't hear Eric. Can you guys all hear me? Yeah, we can now. It's just okay. before when you're, when you're showing. Stuff. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, so when you click on this website tracking beta uh, here, the first time you come into this area, it's actually going to say enable website tracking here. So you'll click on that. Once you click enable, it's going to take you over to the settings page. Um, for those of you who are, who are a little bit more familiar with the kind of web development side of things, this tracking code is going to go inside of the header tags on your website. Um, you also have a few options that can be enabled and disabled at any time once the code is installed. Um, so those include displaying a call to action pop up that you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner that will have your follow up boss number on it. Um, if you have multiple follow up boss numbers like multiple shared inbox numbers, you can choose which one is displayed here. Um, you also have a mobile call to action. So it's going to appear in kind of a mobile format here. Uh, so people are on their mobile devices, they can easily call or text. And then you can enable form capture as well. So if you do have like a contact form or a property inquiry form on your site, people uh, can fill that out and will automatically capture that with the widget. Awesome. Yep. So yeah, like you can see on the right there, um, you know, on Clay's site, at the bottom of each page, there actually is a little call and text uh, button which shows up on mobile. And so this is really cool because when someone is on mobile and they tap that text thing, what that's going to do is take them straight into their messaging app and then they're going to be able to text you straight away. So there's no like filling out a form with their number or, you know, trying to get their email address or anything. Like you're literally just connecting directly with that person. And obviously it's a real number because it's, they're just using the texting app on their phone. And so I definitely recommend uh, trying that out. We're going to show you in the second half of the webinar how to manage that all in follow up boss, how to make sure that you're using uh, the team inbox as a team. Um, so yeah, that, that, that will be something that you guys are definitely going to want to try out. One thing with this is like, you want to make sure that it doesn't conflict with anything on your website. And that's why we've made it optional. So if you do already have something down there, uh, you may not want to enable it straight away. And you may want to test it out. Like if that's working better than what you've already got there. And if you guys haven't seen it at the bottom of your Zoom uh, area for the webinar, there's a little Q&A uh, button and there should be able to just drop um, your questions in there. And that way we can make sure that we get them all answered. I see a bunch of good questions here. I just want to make sure we get to everyone's questions. So that'll give us a running list that we can go through and, and make sure get answered. Yeah, for sure. Um, just one other thing I guess we'll point out with these options and then maybe we can jump into some Q and A. So yeah, we definitely want to make sure everyone gets this set up on all their websites. It's just going to allow you to pull a lot more data into follow up bus. A few people asking like if they already have an integration with a company like White Lopo, that's already sending a lot of data to our API, if this is still going to be valuable. Uh, yes, is basically the answer. So we're going to be able to pull additional information about your ad campaigns, uh, give you additional options as we sort of continue to develop out uh, the pixel and everything like that. So yeah, we'll be working with, um, you know, all those different companies to uh, make sure it really works really well with what they're doing. It doesn't conflict with anything as well. So um, to that point, there's a checkbox there called enable form capture and creating new leads and follow up bus. You want to basically leave this off if you're already getting the leads from your website into follow up bus. So if you are using something like where Lopo, those leads are already coming into follow up bus. Uh, you want to leave that off. So that's just, um, you know, something that's really handy. If you have a website, which is not integrated, that can start pulling the leads in uh, straight away. Even when that's off though, we'll also be doing like the tracking of whoever is filling out the forms. 
It just will be doing that kind of in the background rather than actually enabling those people in your website, if that makes sense. Cool. Uh, Eric, do you want to pick out a couple of questions? Uh, let's go through. Yeah, so I've seen a couple questions come in here. Um, someone asked if enabling form capture will capture uh, Google Forms. If it's anything like that's in an iframe or some kind of plugin on your site, uh, we'll be building that out at some point to capture some stuff in iframes. Right now, it needs to be in basically inside of an actual form on your site, and we'll be able to capture that and bring it in for the form capture. Let me grab a few other questions here. Uh, someone asked if you have a call to action already uh, on your site, will it conflict? Uh, I would say uh, choose one or the other. I guess the benefit here of, of ours is you're gonna have your follow-up boss number already directly on there. So when someone calls or texts, we'll capture that activity automatically in follow-up boss. So that kind of gives you an edge on your call to action with the pixel. Um, so I would probably rec recommend using that, but if you do have a call ac to action that you prefer on your site already, you can uncheck um, either of these, or maybe you don't have a mobile call to action, you could use the mobile call to action and leave the desktop unchecked. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, basically, again, to explain like the, the sort of value or why you want to be using like an easy call to action is even if you look at Clay's site, if you look at the top right hand corner, you can find his phone number. But consider how small that is on his website compared to what's down in the bottom right corner. So I, I would just, if you look at your own website and you look at it on both a desktop and a mobile device, I, like 90% of the real estate websites I've looked at, it's very actually hard to find out how to call someone or to text someone. Um, and obviously, if you don't tell people they can text you, they don't know. So that's kind of like the strategy here is you want to make it really easy for people to get in contact with you. So um, you could also, of course, like blow up the number bigger in the top right of your site, recommend you do that as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's what we're trying to do with the call to action. So you guys can get some more of those warm leads coming in. Um, another question coming in, Kelly was asking like, will this uh, mess with the Facebook pixel? Uh, no, it's basically complimentary. So another big reason why we built this is Facebook's going to tell you like how many conversions you got on your um, you know, from your ad campaigns, like they track that all really well for you. What they don't track though, is they don't track um, that back to a specific person. And so that's what we can do now in the CRM. So we can see which campaign is generating the most leads and then which campaign is generating the most appointments and deals. So it's, it's very complimentary to running Facebook ads and you don't need to worry about any kind of conflict uh, like with the pixels. It's actually probably out the name for it is a little bit inspired by the Facebook pixel. We thought we might call it the, you know, the follow-up boss pixel because some people are familiar with that as well. Brandon had a good question here. He had, was asking if, if can you use the same pixel on multiple sites, the same co uh, code? The answer is yes to that. So you'll actually see a list of uh, once you have this code installed and you have someone visit the site for the first time after the code is installed, you'll actually see a list of the sites that it's installed on here. Um, same exact pixel uh, code for each site. Uh, Mike asks, will it slow your site down? So all of the, um, I guess, processing for this happens on our end. So this is just literally a tiny piece of JavaScript that's going in the header of your site. Um, so the answer would be no, it's not going to slow down your site on that. Yep, awesome. Um, Kimberly's asking if it works with Google Forms. I'm not too sure about that. I think normally they're... Uh, I, I guess you can embed those. That might be something we need to test out though. I'm not sure if we've tested that. Already. Yeah, I think it embeds it in iframe on, on uh, the site. Okay, cool. Yeah, so not to get too technical, but sometimes things are embedded inside like a mini version of your site or an iframe. And we can basically detect that. Uh, for example, on real estate webmasters, they actually do that with their registration form. That's our system can actually detect that our pixel, um, you know, we've, we've made it so it can detect it if it's on the same domain with Google forms it may be a little bit different because if that's actually the iframe is hosted on their domain, uh, basically any kind of pixel can't really track cross domain. So that might be something for us to test out. It may not work, but we, we can give you some other good options if um, you know, you're using those forms a lot. 
And Albert was asking, will it track uh, which pages on your site the contact is visiting? Uh, so we'll actually pull the, the title of that page when, they're, when someone's going through and viewing pages on your site. So you'll see the title of that page here. Uh, he was asking specifically for a blog article, so it would show the title of that blog article here, um, as long as the uh, pixel is installed on, on each page on your site. Yeah, for sure. So this is like, you know, this is where you're going to see all the intel about what people have been looking at. Like, have they been on your contact us page? Have they been looking at like the reviews on your website? You know, what properties they're looking at? Um, just like Eric was saying, you can see all that um, in the activity there. And then you can also, you can click any of those links and you'll go to the actual website as well. Uh, so Randall had a good question. Where do you install the code? So basically uh, you would install this in your website in the header section. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. Like we're not all nerds basically. <laughs> just um, me. Yeah, just me and Eric. And basically you're gonna want to, I mean, you can send it to your webmaster or the other thing you can do, like basically this is just a little JavaScript uh, pixel. So you could also Google like uh, WordPress install JavaScript. And that's gonna have like YouTube videos and stuff like that to take you through it. Our support team is also available to help you. And we're also going to be producing um, some guides for some of the popular platforms uh, that our customers are using. So it's really easy just to follow those and get installed. But yeah, definitely don't, you know, if you, if you get stuck on that, um, you know, let us know and we can, we can definitely help out. But yeah, it's a little bit different per, you know, website, but they'll generally, it'll also generally be near where you would install something like Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager or any other kind of JavaScripts on your website. Um, yeah, there's normally just one place in the back end where you do that, but that's a great question. And I have seen a few people ask or mention that they don't see the website tracking under uh, integrations. We'll make sure we follow up with you uh, once this webinar is complete and make sure that you do have that available. Yep, that's a good point. Um, Douglas was asking kind of a follow up to this last question, like, you know, do you install it on the homepage or every page? So you want to install it um, on every page on your site. And uh, generally how that works again, is like in the back end, there'll be somewhere that'll say like, you know, scripts for the website. Again, where you'd have like your Google analytics code, that's where you drop it. So you don't have to go through each page. Like you just drop it once and you know, it's going to be on every page on your site, but yeah, you definitely want to have it on every page because that's, that's going to enable the tracking for everything. If for some reason there was a page you didn't want to track, um, then you could leave it off on that page. Cool. So Josh is asking um, a couple of people asking similar questions, you know, but already pushing a lot of this data through the API. Do we need to add this? Uh, we recommend that you do uh, for a couple of reasons. Like one, you can start using the call to actions. Uh, two, uh, we're going to be able to track your ad campaigns so we can track them back into follow up boss instead of just tracking like this came from Facebook ads. We can track the specific campaigns from Facebook or Google uh, where those leads came from. So you're going to have a lot more marketing data. Um, that you can work with. And then we're also going to be working on some other pretty cool stuff, um, you know, in future to, to keep upgrading the pixel and what you can do on the side. So it's definitely going to be worth it to have it installed. And we, it's sort of built in a way where it's not going to conflict with anything. So it's not going to, you know, create duplicate uh, leads or anything like that. Um, as we sort of mentioned before, if that is the case, you'd probably just leave the form processing off for now, but it will just still be running in the background um, you know, collecting all that marketing data for you. So that's a good question. Okay, cool. Uh, Eric, do you want to just, I guess like to follow up on that one, do you want to pull up the pixel landing page? Maybe we can just show you guys what I'm talking about, like with this marketing report. So uh, if you go down a bit, Eric, I think it's like the, the yeah, I know we're able to blow that up a little bit more, um, but I'll just describe what we're seeing here. So basically this is a new report in follow-up bus, which is powered by the pixel. So this is gonna be able to tell you, um, you know, which Facebook campaigns are producing leads. You can then go in and view those specific leads because obviously you don't just wanna check that your campaign is producing leads. You wanna check those producing quality leads, right? So you can go in, you can see how many of those people had a bad number, um, fake email, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, so again, this is the big difference between like just using conversion tracking in Facebook, which is going to give you a number of conversions versus actually seeing the people um, in your system, uh, you know, basically, so you can, you can check the late quality and all that kind of stuff. And as you can see there, the next thing we're going to track is appointments, right? Because obviously getting leads is great, but the goal is to actually get appointments and then ultimately to close a deal. So it's actually cut off here, but after deals close, we're also going to show you deal amount. So you'd, you'd have um, a look at basically how much return you got from that campaign as well. And so again, like this is going to show up for Google ads, Facebook ads. Um, you're also able to set up, uh, you know, if you're, you want to do more tracking around this, you can also use UTM codes, which are basically just a marketing uh, way to specify uh, different links back to your website. So you can use them in email campaigns. You can use them on your blog. Um, definitely uh, it's, it's best practice to use them in all your ad campaigns, because then again, you can track all this information back to Google analytics, back to follow up bus. Um, and again, that's, that's where we're different though than Google analytics or Facebook is we're tracking it back to a real lead in person. Uh, Dean's asking, is the code compatible with ClickFunnels? So I don't, I don't know if it's actually specifically tested it with ClickFunnels, but it, it should be. It should uh, work out of the box. And because it's a new feature um, and there's, you know, there's literally thousands of different kinds of websites and codes and everything like that. Um, you know, if you find it didn't work with ClickFunnels, you could write in, just tell us, and we can look into if it's something we can uh, improve to sort of detect that. So yeah, that would actually be helpful, but I would imagine it would just work because, um, you know, I'm sure they have an easy way to install JavaScript in their sites and, you know, forms and all those kind of things. So um, yeah, I, I give it a go if you're using ClickFunnels, you know, I hear a lot of good things about them. So I went ahead to ask if there's already code in the header of your site, do you want to replace the pixel, replace that code with the pixel code? This would just be additional code that you'd be adding into the header of your website. So I wouldn't change any additional code that's in the header, just add this code to it. Yeah, that's a really good point. If you, if you change the other code, that will probably break something on your website. So <laughs> yeah. you definitely want to add this as an additional code uh, wherever you're adding it. Um, yeah, not remove anything. Uh, someone asked what the best way to test and see if the code is working. Uh, the best way to test is to, once you have the pixel code installed in the header of your site, just start browsing on your site. Um, if you have the form capture checkbox checked, just try to fill out a form maybe as a, um, like a new lead, just make up like an email or use your, your personal email or something like that to test and then start browsing around in your site. And you should see that start tracking uh, pretty quickly inside of your follow-up boss account. Um, James had a question, a little bit off topic, but kind of related is like, how are we seeing the tracking data from sites like realtor.com since, you know, like obviously we don't have the pixel on realtor.com. And so like for, the, for realtor.com, they're actually sending us some of that tracking data as you know, if you're buying leads from them, um, they're actually sending us some of that information to our API. So it's basically a special relationship we've got with them. Actually, I don't think many other CRMs have that right now. Um, so, it, you know, it's just a way we're trying to get you extra intelligence uh, on those leads. So that's a great question. Ryan was asking about, uh, can you, can the code be installed? Uh, can you choose whether to put your call to action on the right or the left right now? It's bottom right, but that is a pretty cool idea to be able to, to move that around on the site. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's the kind of stuff we're definitely going to be looking at upgrading. We actually have some pretty sexy designs. Like this is sort of uh, very like effective because it's just putting your number front and center but we actually have some really cool designs we're probably going to be coming out with as well. Um, and, you know, the other kind of stuff we're going to be looking at doing is like showing like if this uh, lead had already been assigned to someone in the CRM, then we might show a picture of the agent down the bottom there as well. So yeah, there's a few cool things we're looking at doing. Um, but yeah, that's good feedback because obviously on some sites, you know, you might have something there and want to switch it over, that kind of stuff. If you've got something there already, again, like Eric mentioned before, you might want to try out the mobile uh, option.
All right, cool. Um, might, have, might try and take a few more questions. We'll definitely follow up uh, with all the other questions because, you know, there's just a lot coming in. We do want to cover the, um, you know, the inbox as well, because it, the thing is like, once you start getting more calls and texts into follow up bus, we want to show you how you can properly manage those um, as well. So I think that's pretty much it. Let's see if we can just pull a couple of a uh, couple more questions. Have you got one there, Eric? Yeah, I'm looking here. Uh, I think it looks like Joe had asked uh, if you already have different pop-ups on your site, uh, kind of where would the call to action appear and can you have it just appear on property views? Uh, that's another really good idea, I think, to be able to kind of limit where that call to action appears. Right now, it, it would appear anywhere that the pixel code is in the header on your site. So likely every page. Yep, for sure. I'm gonna drop a link to the UTM builder if anyone's interested in like, you know, tracking more of their ad campaigns or um, email campaigns or anything like that. Um, it's not something you have to do. We actually try and do a lot of, um, a lot of identifying things for you. So if we, we see that this came, was referred from Facebook or from Google, we'll actually do that even without the UTM stuff. Um, but that, that just lets you get a bit more dynamic. And you have, if you have someone running your ads for you, they're probably already doing this. So again, like we wouldn't worry too much about it. And if they're not, um, you could definitely ask them to uh, as well. Uh, Randa was just asking, I think a few other people are asking like the third checkbox. So like w if you go back to the installation screen, Eric, um, basically this is about uh, form capture. So what that means is we will, um, we'll look at when forms fill out and then put that lead in follow-up bus. Basically, if your website is already sending the leads to follow-up bus and you're already seeing them in the system, then you leave that unchecked because um, otherwise it will create like a new lead flow. It's just, it's, it's nothing too bad, but it's, it's probably gonna mess a little bit with your lead flow. So yeah, you would just leave that uh, bottom option uh, unchecked and we would still do all the tracking and everything in the background. So when people fill out the forms and everything, we still know about it, we're just not injecting that lead into follow-up bus. That, that's also important sometimes with some of these other platforms um, that where they're assigning agents and then sending that to our API. So again, like that's another case where you just leave that unchecked. And a few people had asked about, do you, do you insert the pixel code directly into Facebook if you're doing some of that uh, Facebook retargeting? So the pixel code is gonna always go on your website. Um, so when you're running those ads on Facebook and those are redirecting people to your site, that's where that data capture happens by the pixel. All right, awesome. Well, yeah, a lot of great questions, guys. I really appreciate everyone, you know, being super engaged. Um, a lot of people on the webinar. So thanks again for showing up and, and learning about this. Again, we're going to follow up. We're going to make sure there's a lot of resources. If you get stuck at all, we have an amazing support team. Um, so, you know, we're definitely going to get you handled. If, if any of this sounds like Greek or anything like that, again, like just ask your webmaster. They should be able to just take this code and install it on your site. Otherwise, we're here to help. And it will be able to help get you guys that you know installed as well. Um, cool. So yeah, we might jump over to chatting a bit about the inbox. That's the other big part of follow up bus, uh, which we've been working on improving for about about the last uh, four months, like Q4 and, and January. Um, and yeah, we just want to talk a little bit about what you can do today, and then what we we'll give you a bit of a preview, which Eric has up on his screen here, um, of what you guys are going to be able to do in future. So this is actually the new design it's going to look a little bit different to what you're seeing, um, you know, in your own account. And basically uh, the follow bus inbox is a way where you can start seeing all your incoming calls, texts, and emails, but also where you can work on them as a team. So, um, you know, I think a really important part of scaling uh, your real estate business uh, beyond like the marketing, the recruiting, it really becomes a lot about operations and delegation. So there's a lot of things that need to be coordinated when a transaction happens, and as a, you know, a team leader or an owner or an admin, you need to start being able to easily delegate things to different people. So um, I think the first thing we could maybe take a look at, Eric, would be like, just uh, where do you find this in follow-up bus? Um, and, you know, where do you find what your actual follow-up bus uh, number is, just for the people that don't know? Yeah. 
good questions all around. Uh, so there's a few places you can find your number. Most of you, when you navigate over to the admin screen and click on phone numbers, you're gonna have a list of all your phone numbers on your account. That's gonna include each of your shared inboxes um, along with your individual user numbers if you have our dialer enabled. So that's the best place to see your phone number here. Uh, the cool thing about this phone number page, you can also swap the numbers in between the different inboxes or users. Uh, you can also change the number completely anytime if you want, and we'll keep that old number for 30 days when you do that, just in case you decide you want that number back. Um, when you're in your inbox, uh, when you go to manage your inbox, which is down here in the bottom left-hand corner, when you click on manage, you'll also be able to see each of your phone numbers for each inbox while you're actually setting up the inbox itself. Yeah, and if you're, which like 99% of you are gonna be on the old design still. So you're just gonna see a settings icon uh, up next to where it says uh, company inbox or team inbox. You're gonna see a little settings icon and that's where you're gonna get to this page. Um, yeah, perfect. That's, that's exactly what you guys are gonna see. So you can kind of see the difference between, you know, how it works now and you know, so we're going to go through all the new features uh, here in a moment. So yeah, Eric, I guess if you want to jump into the settings, maybe for one of the inboxes, uh, we can show people how they would be setting up like access and, and call routing so that, you know, when you are getting in all these extra texts and calls from your website and your marketing, um, you know, how do you have a team to help take care of that? Cool. Yeah. Here's the settings itself. Again, if you're on the previous version, you're going to see something more along the lines of this. Did you want me to go over um, this version or the newer version, Dan? Uh, I think we just maybe, maybe let's stick with this one because I think this is probably what most people are seeing now. And cool. yeah, the new one should be a little bit easier to set up. We've also got that video there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the way this works in the settings screen, uh, obviously you have the name of the inbox, uh, inbox itself. Anyone with a checkbox here is also going to be able to see this inbox up here. So if there's people on your team that you prefer that didn't have access to certain inboxes or just don't need access to certain inboxes, just leave them uh, unchecked here. Again, anytime you do make a change to this page, you have the save button in the top right hand corner. Um, any associated numbers with this inbox are going to be shown here. Um, there's some also, there's some really cool options kind of in addition to the, the regular setup options here. And one of those is being able to uh, forward incoming calls to up to five people's mobile phones. And that can be any mobile number that's either in follow up boss or not. So in addition to anyone that it's going to reach uh, with the dialer here, and I'll cover that in a minute, you can also have it reach out to up to five uh, mobile numbers here. There's also a couple of additional options when there's an incoming call. Uh, you can route it to a specific voicemail or forward it to just one number. Um, there's options for when there's no answer. So if no one answers, you could have it go to a specific voicemail or if you have maybe a call answer service or uh, like a, a second office or something like that that you want to forward the number to, you could do that here. Uh, you also have the ability to set your office hours up. So maybe you guys work eight to five, eight to six, and you want calls to do something after your office hours are done for the day. You can choose to forward that to a certain number after your hours are done or to go to a voicemail. Um, and then you have the ability to record that voicemail down here at the bottom. Now, going back to what I initially mentioned here, uh, not only, uh, or I guess in addition to giving people access to the inbox here, Anyone that does have a follow-up dialer, follow-up boss dialer enabled is also going to have that call ring the follow-up boss dialer if this box is checked next to them. So you can see the little uh, icon here. This person is going to receive calls on mobile and also on their follow-up boss uh, desktop app. So that's kind of what these two icons mean. Um, if there's just the desktop app, that means they're probably not added here in the mobile list. They're just going to receive it on the desktop app. If there is no icon, uh, that would mean that they're not going to receive it on mobile or uh, the desktop app, probably because they don't have a dialer, but it does mean they still have access to the inbox. Uh, and again, anyone that texts or calls this inbox, both of those things are going to show up in the inbox when someone texts or calls one of your inbox numbers. Yep. Um, so, you know, we have some documentation on this. Our support team can definitely help out if you need help configuring it. But basically, you want to think about like, who is your phone team? You know, if someone calls your team, like who are the people that you want to, you know, be answering the phone? Like Eric mentioned, what do you want to have, have happen after hours? Do you want it to go to voicemail? Do you want it to go to someone else? 
Um, these are all the kind of things you can dial in here. And I think the big advantage um, of having all your calls in follow up bus is like, these are some of your best leads really, like the people that are actually calling and texting in. And, you know, whenever, like we've used several like other phone systems outside of follow up bus. And the thing you run into is a couple of things. Like one, there's typically never a good workflow if you miss a call, right? And if you miss a call, what that really means is like you're missing out on a lead or an opportunity, right? A very hot lead, like someone that's calling you. And so a lot of those systems don't have a good enough workflow for returning missed calls. They have a workflow for returning voicemails. Um, so what actually happens in our inbox is if you maybe jump back over to the team inbox, Eric, like both missed calls and um, you can see a missed call there and voicemail show up here. So they will continue to show up until someone returns the call or, um, you know, uh, basically takes action on that, on that call. So it's a big, it's a big difference. I mean, I think, um, again, like the main thing is you want to make a hundred percent sure you're not missing any incoming calls to your business. And you know, that, that's really the goal of what we're trying to solve here. Um, and I guess from an accountability point of view, the other thing I like about this, like we use it with our own sales team, you can see that there's four things in the inbox here that need to be actioned. And that really lets you know, like, um, you know, are you up to date? You know, if I saw like 50 things there, I'll be like panicking, like calling my sales manager and that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, if you see four, like that's pretty reasonable. And obviously if it's empty, that means that, you know, you've taken care of everyone. So it's a really good way to sort of uh, check in like that as well. Cool. And there's a couple of good questions that I saw come in. Uh, someone asked, we didn't touch on this yet, but someone had asked if someone calls or texts in and that uh, lead already exists in your system, uh, what happens in that instance? So if someone calls or texts your company number and the lead or, or a shared inbox number and the lead already exists in follow up boss, it is going to route to the assigned agent. Um, these routing rules will apply um, when someone who is not already attached to an agent in your system calls or texts in. Yeah, yep. great question. That's Andrew. an important point. A few people are asking if you can port in numbers. Uh, yep, you would do that in the other screen we saw uh, Eric was showing before the phone number screen. So you can definitely. Um, do that. And if you ever needed to, um, you could port numbers out as well, but we don't see too much of that happening. And a few of you have asked uh, or mentioned that you don't have the shared inbox or the phone numbers tab. Uh, we'll, we'll reach out to you once the webinar is complete and make sure that you have that all set up in your system. Cool. Yeah. I think it may be if you don't have, um, any dialer numbers you could also you'll also probably see something in the top right called like try calling free for 14 days you could also hit that and i believe that may also uh have that screen show up i think we're actually making a change in development very shortly so the phone number screen shows up basically almost for everyone i think it also doesn't show up if you're on a trial right now so um yeah we'll reach out and we'll just make sure you guys have access to that um, again that's where you would also do a port request uh, with any other uh, numbers you have. So yeah, I feel like we should jump into the new inbox, Eric, like kind of, this yeah. is kind of all the stuff you guys have right now. The new inbox is what we're going to uh, be bringing to you in the next month or so. And, you know, we can go through some of the, you know, the new things you're going to be able to do there. So um, first of all, I guess like just the design wise, we've got a big right hand column, um, you know, on the right, that's going to give you a lot of details about the lead. So under activity, that's actually going to show all the website activity that's tracked from the pixel. So you're actually going to have a lot of intel right at your, uh, I guess, fingertips when, when you go to call these people back or text them back. You can actually see what they're doing live on the site uh, if they're on the site uh, right at that moment as well. And also it's got all the other information like their phone number, email, all that kind of stuff. Um, I guess, yeah, so some of the new features you, you're actually able to assign conversations to people. So this is a big deal for like delegating and, you know, helping just have a good workflow with your team. Uh, so Eric can probably walk us through a little bit of how that works. It's pretty simple, but um, yeah. yeah, you can use 
So the cool thing about the delegation here, let's say you have something come into maybe your inbox or a certain shared inbox, you can have someone gr uh, grab from this drop down list here and assign it to a specific person. Uh, you can also assign it to a different inbox if you want to just have that uh, pop over to a different inbox. Maybe it's more relative to um, just another inbox that you have for whatever reason. Uh, you also, when you when you do assign it to people, they'll get a notification, an email notification here when the uh, whatever the call, email, text here when it's assigned. Um, you can also write notes about it and have a note appear here. So I'll just write a note at the bottom. Um, and this is this note will appear for the person that you did assign um, the action item to. So just kind of gives you a, some more powerful options to be able to assign this to people. I think um, currently in, in the old rendition of the inbox, uh, you wouldn't be able to assign things to people and you might have an ISA that needs to assign a certain uh, inbound to maybe uh, an outside sales agent. So you'll, you'll be able to do that now. Awesome. Um, and then what if like I wanted to assign, uh, you know, an email or a, a phone call to someone, but I wanted to leave them like a note, like how would I, how would I go about that? So the best way to do that. So like if we, you can see the note that I added here for this voicemail um, at the bottom. Uh, if, if I wanted to send this over to let's say agent Kuno here, um, when I transfer that person over, um, that's no longer in my inbox. And when Kuno logs into his account now, he's going to see uh, that voicemail that I just sent over to him along with the note I left for that voicemail. Uh, kind of an additional thing I didn't mention is when you are going through and actioning these, this is actually a question someone had as well. Um, when you're complete with the call or maybe you've completed whatever uh, action you're trying to do here, like a call back or a text back, um, you can click close and close this out. Um, and it will disappear from your main inbox and it will pop into the close tab. So you'll still have those as a uh, list of your completed items, um, but it is going to move over to your close tab. Um, for the people who are receiving assigned items, they're going to see that under their um, assigned info here. So I'm actually logged in as Kuno, so I just assigned this to myself basically, um, and this is what it, it's going to look like. So you can see here, this was the assigned item um, along with the note that I had made along with who assigned it to uh, him. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's a good point about the other sign uh, little place up the top there because you can see exactly what's happened with the things you've delegated off. I think as a, you know, as business owners and people like growing our companies and stuff like that, um, sometimes you're nervous at the start, right? To like start letting other people handle things, right? And you want to see how they're actually handling it in the right way. So that's a cool place where you can check like if something got taken care of. And also maybe that person had a question back, right? Like, so maybe I assigned something to Eric. I'm like, hey, Eric, can you go help out with this customer, like everything they need? And then he's like, Dan, like, you know, they said they need this. You know, he can also uh, mention me and write, write something back. And, um, you know, we, we can go back and forth there. Um, the other cool thing is, yeah, you can assign this just to a team like sales or a team like transaction management. And so you want to make, you can make it easy to work with the different teams within your company as well. So. Um, generally with these shared inboxes, you guys, most of you guys will just have one and that's enough. Like that's the right amount uh, for your size. But if you do have a lot of like different departments or different teams in different locations, that's when you're actually going to probably have multiple uh, inboxes and, and it will be helpful rather than just creating extra workflow. Brandon had a good question asking if their office is using follow up boss as their sole phone system in their main number. And someone had asked if, if this kind of uh, relinquishes the need for better voice as well. So that is the idea. So if everyone has the dialer in your system and you have these shared inboxes, you not only have the ability to call out to any US or Canadian number, but um, you re can receive those calls in. Um, and that includes outbound text as well. So you have the ability to call out, text out, and then receive both of those back into the system. Um, the routing is just kind of some additional stuff, just like you'd route your office number in your office already. This is the idea of the shared inbox is to be able to route those calls appropriately when they do ring um, a shared inbox number. Yeah, that's a really good point. So typically, yeah, you won't need to maintain another phone system. We have customers that do, but the big things I think, again, like you're missing out if you do have an external phone system is typically your caller ID isn't as good because you don't have all the like CRM data. 
So that's a big advantage of being able to answer the phone and say, Hey, Sam, like, you know, have all of Sam's information right in front of you, exactly what he did on the website, all the other notes about Sam. If you click Sam's name at the top there, you're straight into his record in follow up bus. So again, you can, you can be in his record even before you answer the phone. So again, like it's just a better customer experience. Um, and then the other thing is just the workflow. Like I mentioned before, all these things being in one place, you see the missed calls, you see the people that didn't leave a voicemail. Those are all opportunities, you know, and I just, I think in a lot of external systems, um, there's not enough visibility, especially on missed calls. Like those are the kinds of things where, you know, you can, you can get a big lift to your business just by setting this up and not missing any calls. Um, Albert, who was one of our early testers on this, um, you know, he said he's not even really getting any entries here because no one is leaving a voicemail or, you know, they're not missing any calls because now their team is just answering almost a hundred percent of calls. And again, like, just think about what that does for your business, right? Like it's, um, it's just dramatically better. Like the goal of your marketing should be to drive these hot inbound phone calls and inquiries. And then you need the system to used to basically answer those. So We'll also be doing some things in future to probably provide a bit more reporting about what your call answer rate is and that kind of stuff. It's something we track like really closely here at Follow Up Boss. Like we know exactly each week what our call answer rate is in support, as an example, um, because you know we want to keep that as high as possible. We want to get it as close to 100% as possible, so no one's ever waiting on the line or you know or missing our team. So when it asks, can calls be live transferred to an agent? Uh, the answer is yes on that one. So as long as they have the dialer, uh, you'd be able to transfer transfer that to that person. Yeah, that's a really great um, point. And I think actually, honestly, like a hidden feature of follow-up bus, I don't think enough people know about that. So whoever asked that question, that's a great question. Um, you can you can live transfer it to someone's mobile phone, even if that agent doesn't have the dialer, but you would have the person who is answering the phone, like your ISA or admin or receptionist, they would have the dialer and be answering it live, then transferring it live from the system. And it's cool when you transfer it as well, because you can have a conversation with the agent first, you can do a three-way call. Um, you know, it really is set up, um, you know, for I mean, the goal again, is like you want to make the customer experience as good as possible, right? So that's, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to achieve with like everything we're doing here. So yeah, call transferring is a big part of that. And again, like how much better is that than saying like, oh, I'll get someone to call you back in a few minutes. So, um, you know, it, it's just a big improvement to that workflow. Um, cool. No, we've got, we've got about 10 minutes left. I want to cover a couple more things. So we're also going to be adding support in the team inbox for email. So a lot of teams uh, use other products or they just don't have any email collaboration, which is like, and that's a big challenge, right? When you think about how, uh, how much communication happens via email. So we're gonna be adding email support to the team inbox. You guys will be able to enable that probably about the end of this month. And you know, we're gonna be able to um, you know, help you guys handle a lot more of those emails and conversations and coordinating those um, as well. So um, yeah, that, that's another big thing uh, that's coming. Right now, you've just got text and phone call support in the team inbox. And in the individual inbox, you have uh, email support now. But again, like that's what's going to be coming for the, for the team inbox. Um, another strategy we thought we'd share. So I've been seeing this a lot from like influencers on social media, like a Gary Vaynerchuk or a Tom Ferry. Um, what they're doing is they're putting up their phone number and saying, text me, right? Text me your questions. And then they answer those questions on social or, and also by texting back. So that's the other thing you can do with your uh, follow up boss number. You can feel free to use that on social, on your marketing and yeah, prompt people to send you questions like that's, I mean, if you just go look at their Instagram pages, you, you'll see exactly what they're doing. And that's, you know, that's a great thing for you to be doing as well. Cause you're, you're providing an easier way for people to reach out to you and you know, something they're already familiar with. And then of course you have their phone number as well. So yeah, I, I don't know if anyone in the chat is already doing that, but definitely recommend, um, you know, trying that. And I think that's sort of maybe a takeaway is getting your inbox set up with the settings of people you want to call, uh, have called on your team and starting to use that number somewhere where, whether it's on your website, your Instagram or your other marketing, 
that would be like my big recommendation for today. And then towards the end of the month, you guys get to see all these extra features around assignment, notes, mentions, all that kind of stuff. But you'll already be set up at that stage. All right, a couple more questions. So here's just a few more things we're working on. So we're working on iPhone support. Actually, team inboxes are already supported on the iPhone. So you guys can go and check that out. On Android, uh, we're working on dialer support. So making calls from your follow-up bus number. That's what we're currently working on. We'll be adding the shared inboxes to Android later. Um, the other thing which has been a big request is group texting. So being able to not just text one person at once, but text like a husband and a wife or, you know, partners, things like that. So that's the other thing we're working on this month. And that will also, of course, like be integrated, you know, all into your inbox here. One other thing I think with, um, when a call comes in unknown, you can basically uh, call that person directly back from here. And then on the right, you can see how easy it is to add them to this DRM. So that's sort of, I think what sometimes also gets missed from other systems. Cause you have to be very disciplined to like take it from one system and then put it in another system. Not to say like you can't do it, but again, like that's the kind of benefit of just having it all in one place. Um, this is a demo account, but you guys would also see voicemail transcriptions, uh, you know, showing up there as well. Uh, so a couple of people asking just, you know, when this will be live again, it's just the end of this month. We'll probably push this live for everyone. We just want to do a bit more testing. There's a few more small features we want to add. Um, but yeah, once we roll it out, we'll do another webinar. We'll have videos, we'll have help documents and videos and um, videos in the app. Sorry. So yeah, we will try and make it as easy as possible. We've also really tried to design it. So it's pretty easy to use. I think a lot of people will, you know, just be able to pick it up. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely be in touch about that. Uh, in future as well. And a few people have asked if there's going to be a recording of this sent out to the attendees. So uh, we are recording this. So um, Dan, I think we have a list of everyone that attended. We could probably send this to. Yeah, totally. We're definitely going to send out the recording, um, you know, to people that attended and didn't attend. So you guys will have that. Again, like if, if you also need help with it, you know, different things here, we're, we're definitely happy to help. Um, I guess maybe like if I did want to look at our knowledge base, where like where would I find that, Eric? Say that last part again. You said if you want to look at the knowledge base here. Uh, yeah, like find our help docs. So it's on help.followupboss.com. I'm also going to show you a quick way to get there inside of the system. Uh, so when you are logged into the app, if you click in the top right hand corner on either your initials or your profile picture, uh, you're going to see help docs here. Um, this is all of our help documentation that we have. Um, I'm actually logged into the back end of it, so it's not going to uh, pull up there, but it's going to get you to this page. Uh, once you get to this page, you can search for any of this documentation. We do have documentation on both the Pixel and um, the new shared inbox, um, as well as the existing shared inbox. So you can find documentation and resources on all of those. And of course, our support team is here to help seven days a week as well. Yep, that's a really good point. So we have seven days a week phone and email support. Um, the team's pretty quick at getting back to you if, if you write them an email. So definitely uh, someone just asked, like, we don't have a webmaster. Like, how, how do we go about this? I mean, feel free just to send us an email, what your website is. And, you know, we can help take a look at that with you, what the best option uh, is going to be, uh, potentially install it for you. Um, and then, yeah, you know, we have seven day a week phone support. I mean, obviously it's awesome. You just want to pick up the phone and call someone. Occasionally, like we can have too many people call in for our support team. And then if you do just leave us a quick voicemail about how we can help you, um, you know, we'll always call you back quickly as well. So um, yeah, that's the best way to get a hold of support. What about product feedback, Eric? So in the app, I want to leave some feedback. Like where, where would I go? Yeah, also a great point. Uh, so we, we, most of our features that we build are based on feedback from you guys uh, and gals. So what I would recommend is again, in that same top right hand corner, you can go in here and go to give feedback. 
Uh, again, this might lock me, log me into the back end here, but this is going to take you into our platform that allows you to suggest or make suggestions or vote on existing suggestions. So you can actually go in here and upvote different things. Let's say uh, you want bomb bomb and text templates, you can vote for that. Uh, and once you get a certain amount of things in here, you can actually start prioritizing how important they are for your business. And we have all that data on our end that we can use to develop new features. Yeah. So yeah, definitely leave us your feedback. We really appreciate that. And like Eric said, you can vote up your features. If there's, there's one thing you really want, you can drag that slider all, to the, all the way to the right. Um, but you know, obviously we take it on board that feedback and we're also just looking like, what are the best teams doing? What kind of extra technology holes, you know, are we seeing what that we think we can add a lot of value and, you know, we're excited about like, I guess all these, um, you know, additional things with the pixel, with the inbox, uh, again, the inbox is going to be launching more at the end of this month. And with the pixel, I guess the takeaway from today is try and get it installed on your site. We can definitely help with that. Um, you're also going to see additional upgrades, you know, on that over the next couple of months as well. So, um, but once it's installed, you're never going to need to reinstall it again. Like those upgrades will actually just happen automatically for you. So, um, yeah, that's what we recommend today is really getting that installed and then also getting your team inbox uh, settings, you know, set up how you like it potentially start using that marketing number somewhere like your Instagram, your social, um, or on your website. Okay, cool. We've just got a couple of minutes left. Um, if you've got another question, drop it in. Uh, a lot of people uh, just saying like, thanks for the webinar and uh, they really liking the new features. So that's, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to check the chat as well. So there's a chat and there's a, a the Q and a, yeah, there's a, um, there's a bunch of questions in the Q and a, so we'll, we'll go through and answer those. Um, thanks for all the positive feedback. It's really exciting for us too, as we're developing some of these new things. Um, Andres asks if this can be integrated with iHome Finder. So we do have this integrated on several iHome Finder um, sites and it's working well, the pixel that is. Um, so the answer is yes on that one. Albert's asking about installing it on your Wilopo site. I think at the moment their support does it. We set it up on Barry's site. Um, we'll we'll work on getting a guide for Wilopo users though. So um, yeah, if you want to be a super early adopter, maybe email their support and ask if they could uh, please help you out. But um, we'll also work on getting you know more of a process and guide together for that. So you guys you guys know what to do. Yeah, I think we do have um, the beginnings of a guide that we're creating. So if you if you want to be a, an early guide adopter as well, uh, just a message into our support, support at followupboss.com, um, and we can hook you up with that if you are a YLOPO user. So Yuan's asking if it will work with your curator site. Uh, yep, it should work with your curator site. Um, you know, we have it installed, I think, on a couple of clients already, and you can install JavaScript there. So really any site where you can install JavaScript, um, you know, you're going to be set. Uh, Ken's asking, like, can we create action plans based on website activity? Uh, not yet, but that's definitely the kind of things we're thinking about. Like, how can we actually, uh, you know, pull all this data in? and then be using it in a more intelligent way to like surface hot leads uh, for you guys, people that are coming back to your website and potentially taking some automated action as well. So that's definitely some stuff which we'll be looking at later this year. Kind of right now we're trying to like just, just get all that data in, but uh, yeah, I love that thought because that's, you know, that's kind of the goal, like bringing all this information into the system, then how do we help you guys uh, just streamline it into like the best sales workflow uh, possible. Uh, Mark's asking, can each agent on my team have an individual pixel? Uh, right now, it's just one per account. So you can, um, you know, can sign on as many websites as you want, but there is just one code. Um, something we might be looking at in future is like a way, if an agent is sending traffic to the, your site, like to your company's site, uh, potentially having them be credited for that or show up in that call to action in the bottom right-hand corner, or if they become a lead, uh, assigning it to that agent who sent the traffic. 
So we're going to look at a few things there. Uh, but right now, yeah, it's just one, one pixel. Uh, Andre is asking, do you have a WordPress plugin that generates forms? Uh, we don't have a form builder. Um, at this stage, we're probably not going to build one. I think there's just a lot out there. And really the goal of the pixel is just to automatically work with as many systems as possible. So I've used in the past like WooFoo forms, Jot forms. Um, there, there's really a bunch contact of good ones. Seven too, I think. Oh, yep. Contact form seven. Um, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, there's really a lot out there and, you know, some are free, some are paid. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, again, it's probably something where we can't create a lot of value. So we're just trying to integrate uh, with all these different systems. Okay. Awesome guys. Well, I think we, you know, I think we got there. I really appreciate everyone uh, spending this hour with us. We're going to be doing a lot more webinars and videos and stuff like that um, this year. If you're not already in our Facebook community, just Google follow up boss, sorry, not Google, search on Facebook, follow up boss and success community. You can probably drop a link in the chat there as well, right? Uh, let me just drop that. And, you know, uh, you know, again, we appreciate all you guys' feedback, uh, you know, being customers and everything like that. And I think Eric's going to be launching a series called Tech Tuesday, where we're going to be doing a lot of, um, you know, going through technical things like a little bit like we went through today with the installation and stuff like that, showing you tips and tricks, how you can use follow up boss with Zapier and other things like that. And so what we'll probably try and do is have a zoom link for that. And, and also a Facebook live stream uh, in the group as well. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, definitely probably good for your ops person or admin or whoever is managing your follow up boss account. Um, you know, bring your questions to those sessions, I guess, is like kind of our ask right Eric. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Tech Tuesdays, we've done a, a couple of them uh, already, but I'm going to keep uh, continue doing those and we'll be covering a variety of different topics. I think we've covered some advanced Zapier setups and we've even gone through some of the shared inbox setup as well. So uh, feel free to bring any kind of question though uh, or idea to those Tech Tuesdays because I'm, I'm happy to address those. Uh, we may even do some uh, Instagram Live uh, Tech Tuesdays just so we can kind of play around with those of you that are doing uh, Instagram primarily and then uh, we will be streaming those via Zoom to Facebook Live too. All right, awesome. Well, um, yeah, have a great rest of your Wednesday, everyone. Um, yeah, enjoy the week and yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Eric, for, for jumping on. Yep, thanks, everyone.